Coming up today on Locked On at Texas Tech, can the Red Raiders cook up a recipe for a healthy QB in 2023? And we're also talking f -f 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 fashion, st style, and apparel. Next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Raiders! <laughs> Great to see you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network. And thanks, as always, for making us your first listen on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. He's the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan. And Chris, I'm excited for today's conversation because we are going to be quarterback heavy. And we're talking quarterback health care. Does your QB have the right health care plan in 2023? Do they have one at all? If you're playing for Texas Tech, you probably need one because it's been some time since we've been able to keep a Red Raider quarterback upright and healthy throughout the entirety of the season. So we got a lot to get to on Tyler Shuck, Baron Morton, and beyond. Also, a voice from the YouTube comments with a timely question, I think, as it relates to fashion sense. We'll get to before we are out of here today. But first, let's set the table with this thought from Red Raider head coach Joey McGuire, because obviously what you're doing up front on the offensive line impacts what you're doing with your quarterback. And Chris, I thought it was really interesting to hear him talk about, in some ways, how they were forced to run a quarterback a season ago, and maybe they're not going to be forced so much to run a quarterback this year. But clearly, that could make the difference mm -hmm. here or there in a banged up, hobbled, or otherwise injured quarterback, or possibly a healthy one. Get your thoughts on this after we take it a listen to head coach Joey McGuire. You're seeing the both quarterbacks have a lot more time, um, you know, and, and it's showing up. Uh, there's uh, more, ver I mean, more explosive plays are happening, so that's good and bad because we want to cut down the explosive plays on defense, but some of it is, you know, they're having more time to, to get open. They're having more time not to hit the check down, but hit, you know, deeper balls. Um, and then it's showing up in the run game, you know, and, and that's fun because we, you know, we, in our offense, we want to run our quarterbacks, but we don't want to have to run our quarterbacks, you know, and if your offensive line, if you have a good offensive line, that then you don't have to run your quarterback. And, you know, last year we had to run our quarterbacks more than what we really wanted to. Man, I thought that was really interesting, Chris, that last part, having to run them maybe a little more than they wanted to last year, and they want to run them, but they don't want to have to run them. What'd you make of that? You, you know, I, I think this is just part of the college game now, so we understand that. There's just not many uh, – quarterbacks out there that are strictly drop back that are just not gonna you know use their legs to one extend the play much less uh get out of the pocket and run I mean that's just kind of part of the deal <clears throat> and, and I, th I think you you have to have some level of of this in, in in your offense but what Joey is saying is I think last year I really do I think they felt they were trying to uh give themselves a, a bit of an advantage or overcome a, a weakness a bit by getting their quarterback out uh, on the edge or doing some different things to protect that line a bit. And look, if, if you, if you've got Donovan Smith playing for you, which is, you know, he started plenty of games for you last year. Th that's kind of what he is. I mean, he's, he's going to be a, a, a runner. I, I, I would even say, I don't know if I would say primary runner, uh, but he's not a drop back guy, um, you know, pure. Uh, I, I think yeah. he's a, he's an athletic quarterback that you want to get on the move. But, you know, you, you this counts. I think this counts some of their the, the plays that they were sacked on and all that, because I think it counts as that's a rush. true. And that's ridiculous. Yeah. I know it, it's it's kind of a semantics with the stats and kind yeah. of goofy. But, you know, Donovan, 76 attempts is what it's going to show. Tyler Shuck, 72 attempts. Uh, Baron Morton, 42 attempts. And again, th they don't actually intend to run this many times. But this is going to be, you know, be the cold runs and the ones that just end up being, you know, a run because they get flushed out of the pocket and take off. Yeah, That's quite a bit. Uh, and again, the, the numbers are a bit skewed. But I, I think that you feel like now you can be a little bit more intentional there. I think of how... I think you would you would prefer to be like how some of these NFL teams are with their with their quarterbacks. And look, there's a lot of athleticism 
at the NFL level at quarterback now. And it's kind of like, you know, spun up uh, from college up into the pros a bit. But what you'll see is you'll see, you know, specific quarterbacks who are franchise guys making 40, 50 million a year. It's only a running situation on maybe fourth and short, uh, fourth and goal, third and goal, red zone type stuff, very specific. But just to have that as a threat, just to have it so it, it's not used – a lot, but it, it is used and you've got it in your back pocket. And so I think that th- there's a happy medium there for, for Zach and Joey on, on how to call plays. And you're trying to keep Tyler healthy, but he's going to run some. This is just part of the deal. And you're going to continue to recruit athletic quarterbacks that can, that can use their legs as a weapon. Yeah, I don't know what it is. And I don't know if we really turned the page yet from college to the National Football League. Used to a quarterback that was mobile and couldn't be touched, could dominate a college game. I mean, Vince Young stands out like a flashing uh, light in my mind when I think about that type of quarterback. Then you go to the National Football League. Well, those guys are a hell of a lot faster as defenders, and it doesn't work out. You get injured. You're not as effective, whatever. We know what the story is. There's like less than a handful of exceptions. It's Michael Vick. And then, like, probably Michael Vick's son someday if he grows up to be a football player. I don't know who the exception is that really sustained it, like went to conference championship games and was, you know, doing it up uh, year after year after year while being that type of QB. Has it really changed sustainably? I don't know. Possibly. They are trying to outlaw defense. So, obviously, that's going to help any quarterback that's running around out there and trying to stay healthy. That that aids them, no question about it. But I was kind of curious. I wonder if you could just break down maybe your thoughts specifically on That one part of Coach McGuire's comment where he says, um, we want to run the quarterback. We don't want to have to run the quarterback. He says, last year we had to run the quarterback more than we wanted to. And so I'm just thinking of like, as an example, and maybe this is just anecdotal within the season, so I shouldn't make too much of it, but the Iowa State game. And like we use the name jokingly Colin Klein because of how it reminded you of the way that you finished the game with your quarterback being the battering ram, your quarterback being the sledgehammer, which was kind of something new and Okay, I, I could saddle up with a little of that if you have the right quarterback uh, to do that. But, Chris, I guess, you know, in a lot of those comments, I'm leaving that day and I'm thinking at that time, well, this is kind of the plan maybe, what they want to do sometimes. Was that maybe more out of necessity? Or what, what did you make of that specific part of Coach McGuire's comment? I, you know, <clears throat> I love the Iowa State uh, an analogy or, or you bringing that up because I, I was – I loved watching you in the game this way when you basically just run QB power several times just to kind of work the clock down. And that's, you know, QB power is where you basically just everybody's blocking except for the QB and he's patient, 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 patient. And then you can just kind of, and you're not trying to rattle 30 yards, you know, off at that point, you're just trying to kind of keep keep the chains moving, keep the clock moving a little bit, but you know, it, it was awesome. Um, and, and the clock just dri- drips down to nothing and you get out of there with a win and then we could all go thaw out. <laughs> but I, I think uh, I think what I hear him saying, I think this is another, you, you know, we, we heard a similar comment uh, phrase the other day about the, the tight ends. Will the yeah. tight ends be more involved this year? Well, last year we had to hold one or two, you know, back most, you know, pass plays just to help protect we don't have to do that now and and i think you're hearing you know him you know joey now say we we don't we can run the quarterback when we want to we don't have to to try to protect our own line or try to give us an advantage and i think it's all basically goes back to that O line being a bit better and maybe it's worlds better but they're trying to they're, they're basically telling you and coaches say things in camps because it, you get asked a variety of questions, but yeah. there, there's been so many hints and then basically bold statements about the O-line that, you know, expectations should seemingly be raised quite a bit because, I mean, they are they are telling you in, in, with, in different ways the O-line has just improved. So we, we can do and, – and plus, I think you have a few more bells and whistles on offense and playmakers – like the Dre McCray addition uh, allows you to do some different things there by getting him the ball, but the quarterback doesn't have to carry it. We, we can, you, you know, Miles Price, a healthy version. So you've got two guys in the similar vein that yeah. I think, you know, kind of 
you know, so I, I think it all equals better O line play and probably a, a bit more at the skill position uh, from a speed standpoint. But you're kidding yourself if you don't think that Tyler Shuck is going to run it on occasion. This is yeah. just this is what he does, and it's what makes him good. So maybe we see that here or there intentionally, but maybe the Iowa State was also like an extreme example of when they go that route, and maybe we shouldn't expect it necessarily. Now, this gets us to the big question, a Tuesday, true or false, Chris, because as we look at these quarterbacks and recent history, which is stretched for a little bit more than just recent, I guess now, by this point in time, man, it's been really hard to see the same guy go through a season starting every game. Tyler Shuck is our guy as we sit here about a week and a half away from game number one. But my true or false question for you, Chris, will Baron Morton start a game? True or false? What do you think? First, today's episode brought to you by BetterHelp. And I know all of our lives are filled with uncertainty, which path to take or just how to get down the road in general. And the answers aren't always clear, but there is something that could be of aid. Whether it involves your relationships, your career, or anything else, talking through it with better help can help you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate the course of your life, giving you the chance to approach every day with confidence and enthusiasm. Therapy isn't just for those who have been through major trauma. It's actually for anybody looking to be the best version of themselves. And with better help, it's entirely online and designed to be convenient and flexible to suit your specific schedule. So visit BetterHelp.com slash college today. That's BetterHelp.com slash college to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P as in Patrick, BetterHelp.com slash college. Head there today, get 10% off your first month, and get busy charting your life's course with BetterHelp. My true or false question for you, Chris, will Baron Morton start a game? True or false? What do you think? You know, if you if you, if you were to like put odds on this question, I, I, I would suggest that the, the the true would be the heavy, heavy favorite just based on right. past results. Yeah. Um, based on and it's not necessarily the Shuck era as much as it is the Texas Tech era. And, and you know, back really since geez, Cowan, if we go back to like the Potts and Sheffield. By the way, I saw Taylor Potts the other day. He's doing awesome. Uh, <laughs> great to see him. His kids are like eight years old now, and it made me feel really old. Um, he's he's doing some coach, but but back in that like sons, Sheff- sons Chris, I, I I think uh, I think it was daughters, I but would I take think a lady raider too. But they can't okay. play quarterback. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. That's true. Uh, you're going back to that era. I was thinking Seth Dagey era. Like I don't and, know, and that's slightly after. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's just you, you've had you've had. Um, a variety of seasons that have been interrupted by injuries to your quarterback. Mm -hmm. And, and I think you have to go back to, I think I'm right on this. I think Nick Shemanek in 17 is the last guy to like start them all. And, you know, it's funny because I think if you, if you'll go back and look at like Nick's numbers that year, he's not a guy that's, that's, you know, going to be mentioned amongst the, the tech great quarterbacks, whatever. But if I told you right now, I mean, and be honest with me. If I told you right now, Tyler Shuck would throw for just, you know, just under 4,000 yards, 33 touchdowns, and 10 picks. You taking that? I'm taking it every day of the week, and that's twice what... on Sunday. <laughs> and I'm feeling better about taking that now, Chris, because I think he plays for a better team. And yeah. there was a point in and time where your quarterback had to be Zeus, yeah. you know, in order to even give you a chance. And I think those circumstances, I hope at least, have changed. Yeah, I, I think that's yeah. Um, How about you? I mean, I think we're going to agree, right? Yeah, no, there's no doubt. I think you're, I think you are better uh, across the board uh, than you were at that point, especially on defense. But but I I'd be willing to tell you that I think you know if you're asking me to answer that question about Baron, I think the the answer would be I, I do think he starts a game just based on in no way like and and, I, and I'll say this. 
I don't think that that has to do with ineffectiveness from Tyler Shuck. I just think that the sport's difficult. Uh, I, I think we, we have to continue to remind people. The last two Big 12 champions, okay, Baylor two years ago and then Kansas State last year, these – these games were won by backup quarterbacks. That's true. That's a great point. <laughs> th- 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 this is, you know, and, and I think last year, I think it was Jarrett Dagey at West Virginia, and they also played Garrett Green. So this this was by design that they were playing multiple guys. But I want to say that there was nobody in the Big 12 that had their guy all season. You know, and this was the 10-team the, the league, obviously, yeah. last year. I mean, Jalen Daniels goes down. Obviously, Shuck goes down. Um, Texas you know, Christian, Baylor, yeah, Texas, yeah, I mean, Oklahoma. Uh, all of them, yeah. Oklahoma Hudson State. Carter played a bunch. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, Spencer Sanders was out some. I mean, it was just – it was just. so this is kind of the nature of the beast. Now, I yeah. will say, if you get a full season of Tyler Shuck, you're going to love the results. I, I firmly believe that. I think that, you know, it's just – you know, and, and he will tell you, look, man, it's my it's not my knee. You know, I haven't lost a step. It's this collarbone deal. It's happened twice in different places. Now, there's some steel in there. So he's more protected now than uh, than he was before. But, you know, the, 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 I mean, how, how often did this injury happen to, to Tony Romo and and, and mm-hmm. different things that, that, you know, usually get brought up? So anyway, but I, I would unfortunately probably say that's true just because odds would heavily suggest that. And I'll probably take the. The, the favorite uh, in that, although that is not in any way what I'd be rooting for. But right. you know, luckily, you've got a guy like Barron that I think a lot of people think a lot of that I think you'd be just fine on those. Uh, well, on those games. If and you, I think that also has Barron's capability has to, in some ways, could possibly at least, you know, lend itself to the conversation of, say, if a, a, a Shuck is banged up or something like what's the urgency to keep Shuck in there? Do you have a number two that can capably carry the pail, give Shuck a break? or You know what kind of hypothetical situations we could get into, but if you have a capable backup, it might lead you a little bit more quickly to say, all right, well, let's let's see if we can get this other guy healthy while, while we turn it over uh, to QB2. And I would have to say true as well, just based on the odds and the recent history, all the things that you have just run down. I'm glad to have the reminder that if that does come true, doesn't have to mean your season is derailed because of some of the examples obviously that you have given us and I don't know why I'm going the opposite of the Vegas roulette protocol because if I'm walking through the casino and I see that roulette well and it's just like red 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 <laughs> red red then I know that's the time to stop by baby and we going back on black but in this case I'm seeing Injured, 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 injured. And yet I'm still thinking, eh, probably another injured. If I had that type of approach to the roulette wheel, I'd have more money still probably in my pocket today. Are we due for a healthy season? Or will that recent history just give you an obvious answer that, yeah, the season is probably going to bang up your quarterback uh, here or there? Let us know what you think in the YouTube comments. You can answer our true or false will you have a quarterback start every game or will baron morton start a game in 2023 let us know what you think and speaking of you letting us know what you think we got a question coming up on the other side you might have seen fashion sense expressed or like they're up depending on your take i suppose by texas tech here this week new old throwback uni uh released and we'll get to a question relating to that and apparel agreements coming up next on locked on texas tech First, today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. And football season is breathing down our necks. And I kind of like it. And FanDuel is giving you a chance to be a winner all season long. Right now, today, head on over to FanDuel.com slash locked on. And when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets back every time they're winning throughout the regular season. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl today at FanDuel.com slash locked on. And you're going to get bonus bets for every dub they pick up download the app through the app store safe secure easy to use or head to fanduel.com slash locked on to get started and then you can throw those bonus bets at over unders player props spreads and much much more and of course when you're a winner with fanduel you're getting paid instantly just one of many reasons why 
FanDuel is America's number one sports book. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and start earning bonus bets right now with America's number one sports book and the official sports book of locked on at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Glad to have you along for the ride on Locked On at Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network with Chris. I'm Casey. Kevin at you from west of the 100th Meridian where it's really going down. And glad to dip into the YouTube comments for a question here today from one of our valued viewers, Chris. I don't know if you saw out there, but a new throwback uni was released by Texas Tech just within the last 24 hours. Harkening, and this one truly feels like hearkening. I think if you just go back like a few years, you're just remembering. It's just a throwback. This is a harken to another time of the Golden Palomino. Donnie Anderson era unis. You got a triple white stripe on a plain red shirt, which is fantastic. Triple white stripe here or there. A little 49ers-ish for me. But the plain red, plain red shirt. Let's get back to plain red shirts. Um, I've got this question, Chris, that I was curious. Kind of stretches beyond uh, the throwback uni and a topic that I don't guess I've paid much attention to because I just sort of thought it was maybe message board fodder. I don't know, but maybe there's a little more smoke than I first assumed. Let's get to this question from uh, Mr. 9.121.19 Marion B, who says, how do you guys feel about the new throwback football uni? And do you see any potential changes in our apparel deal with Under Armour coming Soon. I, I guess the timing of the contract, Chris, has led some people to wonder about possible changes uh, with Under Armour. I don't know why they would be otherwise, unless you're just getting a little antsy or stir crazy. I don't know. But, but what's your answer to the question? And is there actually, I guess, some smoke to some thought of uh, a change in this realm? Yeah. And, and I, uh, back on the throwbacks that were released, I, I think it is. Uh... You know, I think for Tarleton State, I think that game is what they're going to wear those for. And I uh, I think it's, uh, I don't know, it's not lost on me that, you know, obviously you're, um, you know, Donnie Anderson is kind of who you're mimicking this after. You're also recruiting his grandson, who's a stud quarterback. Um, so I think <laughs> Let's that, go. <laughs> yeah, so I, think, <laughs> I, I just want to make sure I was like, oh, that's, that's actually really, really smart. Um, <laughs> right. They may have nothing to do with each other, but I just thought I'd uh, point that out. He's a 2025 uh, stud QB that I think a lot of folks are interested in. Um, I, I would tell you that – that there, there is very real, extremely real Adidas talk. I think there's a guy out there named Patrick Mahomes that is an Adidas client, you know, and 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 I think Mahomes is is relationship with Adidas has spilled over into the whole Texas Tech thing. I think really? very much so. Huh. And I think. I think that you signed a, an Under Armour extension a couple of three years ago, it seems like. And I think that Adidas was semi-involved then. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I think, you know, he's got now his own brand of shoe mm -hmm. and his own like kind of, uh, you know, logo and all this stuff. I, I think uh, I don't know what's going to happen here. I don't I don't pretend to know. But I mean, there's strong indications that Adidas is talking heavily with Texas Tech about making you, you know how you you see OU or Michigan where the Jordan brand you know mm -hmm. football um, and basketball another thing it's just that you know I, I think that you could be on the verge of a serious conversation with Adidas talking to Texas Tech about the athletic department wearing Mahomes branded Adidas gear interesting yeah, I, and again, I, I'm I'm kind of out over my skis on this. I don't I don't know exactly timing of this, but I I believe, and I do believe this. I think that Adidas people have been here. I think that they will be here again soon. I don't know if this is close to happening. I think Texas Tech would be very sensitive to their relationship with not only Pat and trying to you know, do right by that whole scenario. And then also with, with the folks at Under Armour, I don't know when something new would, would be decided or be signed on or whatever, but 
Um, I think it's a very real possibility. Uh, yes, I do. And I think that, um, you know, it's a unique situation because you're, you're one of your alums who's now got his name in the ring of honor. And we just mentioned Don Anderson yep. a while ago. So shout out to two of the <laughs> six, seven or eight guys that, that have their name up there, but he's the face of the NFL, Cowan. Yep. I mean, this is, this is the, you know, and, and he's like, what is he? 25 years old. Uh, 26 years old, something like that. So he's like the face of pro sports. Aside from this little guy running around in Miami now, kicking balls around, um, like Patrick <laughs> Mahomes is the face of professional sports. I think I don't. I don't know if LeBron's still bigger or. I mean, good God, could anybody name a baseball player? I mean, Patrick Mahomes is it in American professional sports right now. Yeah, I uh, and and Pat's 27, so I, I was uh, I was about a year off, but yeah. You're not, a, you're not a Lionel Messi fan? Yeah. Uh, I just, it's soccer, whatever. I did watch I the deal Football. the other night with Nashville. Yeah. No, soccer, Chris. Uh, <laughs> and I saw the most exciting 20 seconds uh, I've ever seen in a soccer match, and the dude is running all the way down. Never mind. Why am I wasting people's time with this? Yeah, he, he, is, uh, he is extremely talented. He's but kind of I, a global I, I phenomenon, so I wanted yes. to leave room for a global phenomenon. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> but, but Patrick's up there as well. And uh, I don't care about any of these brands. I don't buy any of this crap. I, I'm not an athlete, so I don't need tennis shoes. I don't need sporting apparel. I don't. I, I buy my clothes at Jibos, you know. So I I don't care on that front. <laughs> I know some people are like brand loyal. Like it'll crush. I can think of one person specifically. It will crush if Under Armour leaves Texas Tech or vice versa because their closet is destroyed and they will not mix up brands. I don't care about these things. I'll mix up anything. And everything. I'm going Wranglers. I'm going Perry Ellis with the tie right now. Who else in the world is wearing a Wranglers Perry Ellis combo? And and, and and I don't know of any other athlete, current athlete, with their program that that's got the kind of stroke that he's got. Yeah. That in any whether it be basketball or football, that it would make as much sense for to do what Tech is doing with the uh, an apparel company and a logo and. And, and the name that that exists. I mean, think about it. I don't know who else in the NFL like go, well, man, he signed with this and it would make sense if his no. school did that. I mean, I, I don't know, but it it may fit here. It may not. Uh, I, I don't know, but I, I, I don't I don't pretend to know how it ends up. But I think it's pretty fascinating to to discuss because it is very real. I will say that. Well, when Under Armour is out the door, I'll consider that a good thing because I got a whole nother beef with that and them coming out the gates claiming cotton is the enemy. You're saying that you're my enemy coming from multiple generations of cotton farmers. There are freaking cotton bowls on the seal of the university. And I know they gave you money, but it's like the local mafia Don giving you money. Yeah, sure. We'll protect you. Meanwhile, the second we don't, we're killing you. So they can kick rocks all day, every day with their overpriced <laughs> junk. I would absolutely encourage anybody and everybody to go see other outlets sideline provision whatever you like i don't care but that's where i try to throw my money now because it's all just as expensive by the way <laughs> but at all, least at all least all I know one is, is not saying my family is the enemy i don't know is if they do switch we, we got to play some run dmc uh on our show <laughs> uh to, to make the announcement because uh, that that was back in my day man when i remember that uh oh yeah that song and then there Three was stripes. that movie the uh, there was that movie the program with james Conn about football and that one linebacker <laughs> yeah. he's like man you, you can't even read he goes yes i can he goes see this shoe it says adidas <laughs> um you know <laughs> so anyway man I, I i don't know we'll we'll, we'll kind of see where this thing goes but like there's something in the win so that, i i would tell you if that you're hoping for such very things, much so there's so. something to hold on to uh yep. Possibly. And the best uni that we've been given by Under Armour in the last however many decades existed 30 years before their company did. So anybody that will just come right back out and give us the template we all know we want, uh, I'm going to saddle up with them. I don't care if it's Keds or Skechers. I don't give a crap. <laughs> just come back and give me those beautiful Zach Thomas era or earlier unis, baby. Come on, saddle up. Let's ride. All right. That's the longest apparel conversation we'll probably have on the show this year what a ride for those who joined us lucky you tell your friends tell your foes tell any old you know and please join us for the next one on the other side subscribe on youtube or anywhere you get podcasts so you never miss an episode chris appreciate the time as always man we'll see you for the next round absolutely keep hope alive everybody for chris level i'm casey cowan thanks for joining us again and we'll see you for the next one right back here on locked on texas tech